Hello from the Forcetronics YouTube channel. Welcome to measuring wind speed with an anemometer and Arduino. And that's exactly what we're gonna talk about. If you haven't seen an anemometer before, this is it right here. It has the cups, you know, when the wind blows, they spin. We can use that to measure the wind speed. And for this video, I'll mention that I tested this both on an Arduino Zero, which uses an ARM microcontroller, and in the Arduino Uno, which uses an AVR. So this should work on most AVR and ARM-based Arduinos. For this tutorial, I'm gonna be using the InSpeed Vortex Wind Sensor, which is a relay-based anemometer. So basically it has two wires. If you measure between those two wires, normally it'll get an open circuit. Then when the cups turn once a revolution, they'll close a read relay, which closes the circuit. And you use that opening and closing of the circuit, the spacing between it, to basically measure the wind speed, which I'll of course talk about more. Now this should work for any relay based uh, wind sensor. Now there is different calibration factors out there. So for instance, basically if this spins once per second, a full revolution per, per second, it means the wind speed is 2.5 miles per hour. Now this may, that stat may differ. So you just have to go to the data sheet of whatever anemometer you're working with. Okay, and let's talk about the anemometer circuit. Now, since the anemometer has a read relay in it, which is a mechanical switch, which can have the phenomenon called switch bounce, we need a debounce circuit to connect it to the Arduino. So, you know, if it didn't have switch bounce, and by the way, if you don't know what switch bounce is, I just did a video on it before this one, and a debounce circuit basically eliminates switch bounce. And what switch bounce is, when you have mechanical relays and they touch, really quick, they typically bounce a bit. So you get a, a little jarring in the circuit, a little high and low in tens of microseconds, but it can cause false readings as you're gonna see. I had to add a debounce circuit. If you're curious how this debounce circuit works, see the video before this, because I go into great detail about debounce, and I even use this anemometer as a, an example. So check that out. But with this circuit, uh, basically here's the anemometer we're gonna get Here's our Arduino interrupt pin, and we wanna use an interrupt because the uh, anemometer spinning is an asynchronous event, meaning we don't know when it's gonna open and close and close and open and how far apart those are gonna be. So an interrupt allows us to easily detect that because an interrupt can detect asynchronous events. And if you're not familiar with interrupts, I have a video on interrupts as well. But the important thing is what we're gonna get here at this node and at our interrupt pin when the anemometer opens and closes, we're gonna get these pulses. So when the anemometer is open, we'll have a low, a ground condition. When it closes briefly, we get a high, and then we go back to low. And basically, if we measure this, the timing between these rising edges or these falling edges, I'm gonna use the rising edges though, we can calculate the wind speed. This would be the instantaneous wind speed. If we measured a whole bunch of pulses, we can calculate the average wind speed. Okay, here is my setup just so you can see it. Here's the anemometer. I have uh, wires connected to the Arduino VCC as well as to my circuit board, which has my debounce circuit. Here's the cap, here's one of the resistors, here's the other, and here's the diode. It's a little hard to see. But this is my prototyping setup that I'm gonna use. I just want you to see that. Here is a oscilloscope capture of the anemometer output using the circuit you just saw. And I use the same screen capture in my debounce video. But basically this is what we're gonna see from the anemometer. So here's where the circuit or the relay is open, here's where it's closed. And if we measure between these edges, like I mentioned before, we can calculate the spin. And if you notice, you can see that this, ca this captured the anemometer slowing down in wind speed because the spacing between the pulses gets a little larger each time. Okay, I wanna first start out with a video before I get into the code, and then we'll show another video showing the accuracy of the measurement. So here I'm just gonna show the system working. Here's my circuit once again, the picture you just recently saw. Here's me looking over. I'm gonna pick up the anemometer, and I'm gonna bring it over to my computer so you can see the serial monitor. So basically, and we'll see this in the code, I have it printing out the anemometer speed in hertz, which is not the wind speed, it's just showing the revolution speed. Then I calculate the wind speed, then I calculate the average wind speed over 1.8 seconds. Right now it's zero because nothing's spinning. 
So I'm gonna give the anemometer a quick blow from my strong lungs. We can see it's now spinning, and now we can actually see some readings. And let me try and get it so it's not blurry. So here we can see it's, the revolution is 12.8 uh, uh, hertz. I'm sorry, this is not easy to see too, I apologize. That equals a wind speed of about 32 miles per hour. And then you can see the average is about 25. So we, we, we got some readings in between. You can see we're starting to peak. Then notice our speed quickly drops. And I, once again, I'm sorry you can't see that well. But here, it quickly drops. We are at 12, or I should say we're at 32 miles per hour. Then we're at 13, then we're at six. And you can see the average is gonna fall a little bit slower because it's, it's an average measurement. So that's the, the setup in action. Let's look at the code. Okay, here's the Arduino code. I'm gonna run through it. Of course, I have comments in it, and then I will uh, post it on my blog if you wanna copy it and paste it. Once again, I tested this with the Arduino Zero as well as the Uno. Up here, I start making some of my variables. So the interrupt pin, I'm gonna use pin D3 or three. On the Arduino Zero, almost any pin can be an interrupt. On the Arduino Uno, only D2 and D3 can be interrupts. Here's an important parameter. This, this is gonna be used for my timing to track the time between pulses. So this is one of my timing measurements. And the reason this is an unsigned long is because I'm using the millis function. And so the millis function, you wanna use an unsigned long for that because it can get to be a very high number. And this volatile tag for the compiler we want that there because we're going to be using it in our interrupt function and we need it to be handled a special way so we don't lose that data. Here's another timer variable and you'll see how those are used. This variable, this float, is going to be used to capture the pulse, the time between each pulse. And then I'm going to uh, use this for the averaging, the cumulative pulse time. This variable is gonna be, tell me when I start a measurement, because what happens is we start a series of measurements, we then stop them to report out the data to the serial monitor, then we have to start the measurements back up. We don't wanna do measurements in between other things because we risk missing data, and I'll talk about that. This variable just holds the, the amount of, of measurements we made in a given time period so we can do our average calculation. This setting is just if you wanna add some kind of alarm so for instance, if you said, oh my gosh, I want to alert something after 60 miles per hour, and I just do a simple if statement, and I turn on an LED. Here's our setup. I use the LED to signal an alarm. Here's where I start to set up my interrupt. I set up the interrupt pin for an input pull-up. I then attach the interrupt. So here's my interrupt pin. Here's my ISR, my interrupt service routine. So that's the name of the function that gets called whenever a rising edge comes into pin three. So there's, we're gonna see the function, but if you're not familiar with interrupts, check out my interrupt video. But whenever a rising edge comes in on D3, the code stops wherever it is, and it goes to this ISR function, anemometer ISR. Okay, here is the loop. So first thing I'm gonna do is grab the latest millisecond reading. This if statement just tracks when the anemometer stops spinning. So if the anemometer slows down really slow, it'll keep, the serial monitor will keep spinning out the last reading. But what this says is, once the wind speed gets below one mile per hour, you know, set the, set the wind speed to zero. We don't, we don't care after it's below one mile per hour. This if statement is used to basically control when we calculate the average speed and when we report it out to the serial monitor. So once again, this is using variables that grab time from millis. And then basically it's saying every 1.8 seconds, do the average and report out the data. If you wanna change the average time, you would just change this variable. So once we get into this if statement, so our loop's gonna go and go and go until either an interrupt happens you know, this if statement is true or this if, if statement is true. When we get into this if statement, we don't want to miss any data. So we detach the interrupt. We say, turn off the interrupt. We're not going to be measuring wind while we're inside this if statement. And keep in mind, this if statement, you know, is going to execute in a hundred microseconds. It doesn't take long to execute. 
Here I'm going to do my average wind speed calculation. So I use my uh, these variables and I, I call a function. I'll show you the function. Here I do my alarm check. So I just basically say if the average wind speed is above or equal to, and I set the variable to 60 miles per hour, you know, turn my LED on, else make sure the LED is off. I then reset these average variables. I then calculate the instantaneous wind speed. Now I should mention the instantaneous wind speed is actually being calculated every time the ISR is called. I just, it's only being computed into miles per hour when I enter this statement. If you, if you want to capture the instantaneous wind speed all the time, you'll want to basically calculate it each ISR and then store it in a large array. But here I'm just turning it into miles per hour only when this if statement is true. So basically I say if the pulse time, which is the time between the anemometer pulses, as long as it's above zero, calculate the frequency, which is the revolutions per second, then calculate the miles per hour. And I'll show you those functions. I also have a function for kilometers per hour too. Then I start up my serial communication. I print out the anemometer speed in Hertz, the current wind speed in miles per hour, and then the average wind speed in miles per hour. Then also I end my serial communication. The reason is, is because serial, the serial library in Arduino uses interrupts and we don't want to mix those interrupts with our own interrupts. So I turn off serial. I set this variable to true to, to tell the uh, ISR we can start measuring uh, wind speed again. I reattach the interrupt. So I turn the interrupt back on and then I get the latest time from the millis function. So that seems like a lot, but remember that happens real quick. Here's some of my functions that I use for calculations. So here's the anemometer frequency. I basically take the pulse time between two pulses and I divide it into one because this is a period. So I want to turn it into a frequency. Here I calculate miles per hour. And remember this 2.5 comes from the vortex anemometer data sheet. If you're using a different anemometer, you might have a different factor here. Then here's my kilometers per hour calculation. I basically use the miles per hour and then I convert it to kilometers per hour. Here's where I calculate the average wind speed. All I'm basically doing here is I basically divide the average into, or I divide all my measurements into an average and then I turn that into the frequency and then into miles per hour. Okay, here's where the, a lot of the magic happens. And keep in mind, you want your code inside the ISR, the interrupt service routine, to be as short as possible. You don't typically want to call other functions in there either. Now you can see, once I get in here, I want to know what time it is, so I call the millis function. Here's something that I had to look up. The millis function will return the millisecond time. The millis function, though, will not tick while it's in the interrupt service routine. But that's not a big deal because the interrupt service routine is going to execute in microseconds. So we can get the millisecond time. Here's that start variable that I showed you a couple times. Basically what I'm saying is, is, mm -hmm. is if we have not started yet, we don't want to make a calculation because we don't have any edge measurements. So this is our first edge measurement because the interrupt service routine was called. So let's get the current time, set it to into this variable, which tracks the last time, and then set start to false. So this is what will happen on the first measurement or after we exit out of the, uh, the loop where we, uh, talk, where we did the average calculation and the serial communication. Okay, if we've already made our first measurement, here then start's going to be false. So here's where we do our measurement. We get the pulse time and I convert this to a float. So I'm using my current measurement of the time in milliseconds, using my past measurement of the time in milliseconds to get the difference. And then I divide it by a thousand because I want to turn it into seconds. Now you don't have to do a float here. You could do an integer and you just wouldn't have decimal values for the, uh, the calculation. It just depends on what kind of precision you want. If for the average calculation, we want to add up all the pulse times, so that's what I do here. And then I set the average count to one more. So when we're finally ready to do an average, we know what the total pulse measurement time was in there. 
then we know how many times we made it so we can get the average pulse time and we can use that to calculate our speeds. Okay, that's it for the code. Pretty simple, a great way to get up and started with the anemometer. Okay, now let's look at another quick video to kind of show that this code actually is somewhat accurate in measuring wind speed. Okay, here's what you're looking at here is a function generator. So this basically can output different waveforms. I'm going to use it to output a pulse, and you can see it here. Here's the output right here. I have a BNC cable connected to it. But I'm basically simulating the anemometer pulse. Similar amplitude. I set the frequency to 6 hertz. So I'm simulating a revolution 6 times in 1 second on the anemometer, which would equal 6 times 2.5 speed. So essentially, I think that's 15 miles per hour. So I'm using this to make sure, I use this to make sure my code is accurate because I don't know how strong I am when I spin it by hand or when I blow it or put it in front of a fan. Okay, I'm showing the connection and uh, I don't need the debounce circuit. So I essentially have it connected to straight to the Arduino and then I'm just showing the, the accuracy here. So let me see if I can get it less blurry. So here we can see 6.02, 5.99. So we can see that it's pretty accurate. And here we're seeing the wind speed at 15.06. And then we can also see the average wind speed at 15.02 miles per hour. So you can see it's pretty accurate out to you know, 0, 0.0 something. Uh, so, so pretty good accuracy. I will warn you, the UNO clock is a little slower, so you'll probably see a little less accuracy than you will see on the zero, but it's, it's not a big deal. Okay, that's it for measuring wind speed with an anemometer and Arduino. If you have anything to add, any comments or questions, please use the comment section. If you haven't yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do, and feel free to check out the Forstronics.com store. Thank you for watching.